Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with the College Audition, back again with another episode of the College Audition podcast, here today with my very special guests, Andrew Kayo, lecturer of musical theater and dance, and Matt Morgan, senior lecturer of musical theater voice from the University of Florida. Thanks so much for joining us, both of you. Glad to be here. Yeah, what's up, Tim? Thanks for having us. So we are going to, as always, get to know the person or people before the pod, before the program. So, uh, Andrew, well, let's start with you. Give us a little bit about your background, training, history that led you up to your time at the University of Florida. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, I kind of fell into theater pretty late, uh, late in high school and uh, ended up getting a degree in musical theater and dance uh, at at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. So I started all of this, my dance training, not really till I was about 19 years old, um, but eventually uh, I moved right to New York and I was lucky that the, um, the industry was pretty good to me. I spent 10 years on Broadway doing uh, Aladdin and nice work if you can get it and anything goes. Did a good deal of some TV and commercials and print stuff. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to direct and choreograph and teach. Uh, so, the time came and uh, found UF and my wife and kids and I have been really happy here in Gainesville and part of the Gator Nation for six years now. So, boom, here we are. Boom. All right, Matt, tell us about you. So sort of a similar beginning. Uh, grew up in southwest Louisiana in a town called Lake Charles and uh, didn't know anything about theater or that it, that it existed and uh, kind of fell into it. Uh, watching a, a VHS tape of the three tenors at Caracalla, and I saw Pavarotti singing Recordi Armonia from Tosca, and uh, I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to do that, and so went to Louisiana State University for undergrad and uh, master's in voice, and uh, spent, I'd say, over 20 years uh, as a leading tenor at Lincoln Center, uh, New York City Opera, Avery Fisher, Fisher Hall, Alice Tully Hall, uh, uh, Kennedy Center in D.C., sang all over the world, uh, career as an Italian pop star, of all things. <clears throat> you can uh, check that out on YouTube if you want and see it. So, uh, And then uh, my, um, my girls, they're right up there. They're bigger than that now, but my youngest was getting bigger, and, and I was only home uh, about 10 days at a time uh, throughout the year, and I wanted to be around more, and I uh, always had a passion for teaching. And uh, uh, had recently relocated down to uh, Florida because uh, awesome tax law uh, for a performer. And uh, we, uh, I wound up here at the University of Florida. Our, our uh, chair, Tony Mata, who's not with us today, uh, helped create a really amazing position for me that allows me to uh, teach voice, which is my passion, and still perform. Uh, I just got back late last night from a, a gig out of town, and I'm heading out next uh, Thursday for another one. I'll be all over the country, still doing the thing, be in Hong Kong in a couple of weeks singing uh, and uh, bringing that, all that experience back to the students here. So Matt, what does your role uh, at the University of Florida entail? What classes are you teaching uh, and how do students interact with you while they're there? So I'm the dedicated uh, uh, voice teacher, singing voice teacher for the BFA Musical Theater. Um, uh, as well, we can talk about this, I'm sure, later, but we uh, take a maximum of six students a year. So we have a very small selective program. We're able to offer a lot of one-on-one -on -one and very small class size interaction. So if you're a student in the program, you study voice with me for the four years. Um, and uh, the interaction's a one-hour lesson a week plus a two-hour studio class on Wednesdays. And Matt, for you, or Andrew, for you, same question. Yeah, sure. I, um, I teach quite a bit and I interact with students uh, in rehearsals for productions as well. So I teach uh, two Broadway dance styles classes. I teach a beginning tap class. I teach a beginning or excuse me, an intermediate and advanced tap class. I teach a fundamentals of musical theater acting class. I teach a musical theater audition and business class. Um, in addition to that, I'm often involved as either choreographer or director for our shows. Um, Students sometimes have the opportunity to be associate choreographers with me when we're producing uh, our shows here 
uh, at the University of Florida. Some students get the opportunity to uh, be assistants in class, uh, depending on the class needs that I might have. Um, we have this thing called SOTD Ambassadors, which is uh, our students uh, in leadership positions that help um, help us run some of the recruitment elements like uh, tours and auditions and stuff. So um, students get a, a lot of different interaction with me throughout the course of their year. And SOTD is the School of Theater and Dance, correct? That's right, Tim. Yeah, School of Theater awesome. and Dance. All right, I'm going to let you guys pick which one of you answers this question, but this is the point in which I ask our guests to give us uh, your elevator pitch on the program, 60 seconds or less. Uh, tell us about the program at University of Florida. Go, Go. Andrew. And if you leave anything out, I'll jump in. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. That sounds fantastic. Um, well, we our, our BFA musical theater program, we're really lucky to have Broadway accredited and professionally experienced faculty here where the students learn how to create and really sustain a career in the performing arts industry from those who have had and continue to have highly successful performance careers of their own. Um, we're constantly sharing our professional networks with our students via in-person and numerous virtual visits each semester and this includes Tony and Academy Award winning performers and some, uh, some of the top uh, directors uh, choreographers, casting agents, producers, and, and, and many others across the industry. Um, Matt was mentioning earlier uh, of how selective our program is with just six new students each year and 24 musical theater majors in total. I think we're able to provide <clears throat> unparalleled individual attention uh, and a real personalized academic journey that kind of embraces where each student is, uh, what they need, what they want. Um, we have alumni performing on Broadway, in national tours, television, commercials, regional theaters, cruise ships, and many other corners of the industry. Um, we are a small, selective, and concentrated program in the middle of a gigantic public university. Our students get to have the big school college experience with things like football games in our 88,000 seat stadium and uh, tons of other NCAA Division I sports. We have a thriving sorority and fraternity life with 66 chapters across campus. Um, we're home to an AI supercomputer that has been named one of the most powerful in the world. Uh, and our, our location here in the heart of North Central Florida really means that things like beaches and the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean and Disney World and Universal Studios is all just a short drive away. So, uh, yeah, we love it here. Lots of great things going on at the University of Florida. Did he forget anything, Matt? For once, he nailed it. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, so imagine I am a freshman uh, BFA student walking onto campus for my first year. Tell me what that first year looks like. Yeah, uh, awesome. Our first year students get the opportunity to perform in our productions right away when they get here. So most of our first year students will be working on a show Oh, and throughout the year, shows, plural. And uh, we're really excited about our curriculum. We just got a complete overhaul. Um, and it's set up to help our students thrive in the current landscape of our industry and uh, the world. Uh, during their first year, students will get some of the core classes you expect, uh, a musical theater degree like acting, script analysis, musical theater history, a voice class, speech class, private voice lessons, voice studio with me, of course, uh, and depending on how many college credits they have coming in, like the APs and things like that, um, uh, they might have a couple of gen eds. Uh, uh, some of our core theater classes actually satisfy those gen ed requirements, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, great. and I really, I really think one of the cool things about our new curriculum is, is how it helps our students understand how to navigate the business aspects of our industry. Right away in the fall semester of a student's second year, I teach an audition and business management class where we really dive into what it means to do this for a career, you know, agents and auditions and actors equity and marketing and networking and taxes and all that stuff. Um, all those things that really help That's students right. understand the infrastructure of the professional world that they're entering into and more than just their onstage skills. Um, and we really love that we can provide this class to our students early in their journey here so that they can be moving through their training um, with this in mind, 
And by the time they graduate, you know, their business is already up and running, ready to go. They're working. They have professional connections. And they understand the industry and how to move forward. Yeah. And so how did the, uh, the, the last two years or how does the rest of their path uh, sort of shape up as they're going through the four years? Yeah, well, uh, we actually have something really cool in our um, curriculum with uh, a, a, a strong element of choice. Our BFA musical theater degree has three elective categories, which really allow a student to explore elements of the theater uh, that interest them. We have a things like a content generation elective with classes like playwriting and directing and comedy and improv, applied theater for health. Um, we have a skills elective with classes like stage combat, um, on camera stuff, additional levels of voice and dialects, somatics. And we have a theater studies elective with classes like Latin and US Latinx theater, African American theater history, um, diversity and multiculturalism in American theater, dramaturgy, um, and lots, you know, lots more exciting stuff in the curriculum. But that uh, focus on the business uh, training and doing it for a career and that element of choice we feel is a, a really unique opportunity for our students to um, be prepared for the, the world and the industry that they're about to head out into. Yeah, and, and as you just said that, preparing them for the world and the industry, what does the, the last year sort of look like in order to help them transition from the education world to the professional world? Yeah, we're lucky to have a, um, an awesome showcase in New York City with uh, some of the top industry professionals that our our faculty are connected to. Um, I remember seeing that that showcase before I took the job here at UF and uh, really noting the incredible people in the room when I was there in the city. Um, and now we've, uh, during COVID, we ended up doing a, um, a digital uh, showcase and we found that that was really successful for our students. So we're moving forward now and, and trying to uh, find a world where we're doing both that digital showcase as well as an in-person in New York City as well. Um, so our, our students are really connected to the industry and, and to our, our networks and really thriving already even before they graduate. And talk about a little bit the opportunity to study other things outside of musical theater if they perhaps want to double major or minor in something. Sure, the, we have opportunities depending on how many APs you have coming in. You can do minors in a multitude of subjects. P pretty much all of our students are doing some sort of uh, minor, whether it be uh, minor in dance, uh, minor in a foreign language, Spanish, uh, um, it could be marketing. We, uh, the really exciting thing that we have here at UF with the Warrington School of Business is um, a, a master's in business that is designed to dovetail perfectly with the, uh, the BFA uh, degrees. Uh -huh. uh, so you can, uh, depending on how many classes you have coming in, you can graduate in four years with a BFA and a master's in business. Uh, and quite a few of our students take advantage of that. And it's a unique offering for us. Um, that uh, doesn't really exist in a lot of other uh, places. Yeah, one of our very own TCA family, Matt Grenier, uh, who's around here as a content manager for us, he actually did that and has gotten his BFA in musical theater with uh, a business uh, master's as well, which is really cool. And uh, it's come in handy around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. We love, we love that. Matt so much. Great. And so... Uh, Let's talk about uh, any integration that you have. You have a BFA acting program there as well. So is there a crossover with the BFA acting program? Because the, 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 oh, the classes yeah. are small. I'm just wondering how mm -hmm. that all fits together. Yeah, they, there's lots of cross-pollination. Uh, all of our students, uh, it's the one big family. They, they all interact. They, they do share acting classes together because the programs are, are so intimate. Uh, when Andrew and I always talk about when we uh, do our recruiting visits that we're looking to create a family uh, uh, and, you know, in families, no two, two uh, members are alike. And uh, we all, all want to make sure that we, we gel and get along uh, because there is so much interaction between the students, uh, not just in classes, but also socially. Our BFA musical theater students and our BFA acting students actually take their acting progression together. So acting one, two, three, four, they are taking that class together. So there's a lot of knowledge and experience that they 
gain from each other throughout that process. Um, our BFA acting students also uh, participate in a number of our other musical theater acting classes that we have. Um, our BFA acting students uh, are involved in the musicals and our musical theater students are involved in the plays. Um, we really have a, a really inclusive family where everybody gets opportunities uh, kind of across the, uh, across the board. And uh, a lot of students, especially in recent years, are asking about the opportunities for the musical theater students to get any training on, on camera and film and television uh, stuff. Can you talk about any uh, opportunities for that? Yeah, we, we have two semesters of acting for the camera uh, training here uh, in our curriculum, and those are available to our musical theater students if they wish to take them. Um, I, in the musical theater audition and business class that I teach, we have uh, a little bit of a unit section where we cover uh, self tapes. And um, actually right now we're, we're working on submitting some uh, self tapes to uh, an associate at Tara Rubin casting. Um, that's going to work with us uh, on, you know, kind of the perspective of, of what those, what, what a good self tape is from, from, from their side of the table. Um, I think a lot of our faculty actually have a, a decent amount of experience behind the camera as well. Um, I'm lucky to have done both musical theater at, at a high level and done TV and film stuff. So um, I think those lessons are just naturally being implemented into our classes. And um, we, a lot of the guest artists that I bring in uh, have that crossover as well. So s students are getting the, uh, the chance to meet musical theater performers who also have flourishing TV and film careers and really get to uh, supplement their training uh, uh, in that direction. So, uh, University of Florida also has a pretty robust uh, dance program. Um, talk to us about dance training in musical theater there. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll start the, the questions with when a student shows up and they've been taking dance class since they were three years old, are they able to level up? Uh, so they're not starting at a beginner dance level. Yeah, this is the thing that we're, one of the many things that we're so, uh, that we love being able to do for our students. With with such a small class, with only six musical theater students, we're really able to tailor their academic journey to where they are and what they need. Um, we really know when these students come into our program, we really know who they are and where they are and their, where they're at in their journeys. And so, you know, I'm able to help them get into a dance class that really suits where they are. Um, one, you know, we have some students who come in and are have had 15 years of dance training. And for those students, even as freshmen, we can get them into uh, advanced level dance classes with our BFA dance program. So they're taking uh, advanced level dance classes with uh, dance majors. And we have some students who come in where dance isn't their their strength uh and they need a little more experience there and we're able to put them into a class that's a little more uh at their at, at their level so yeah all of our students are, they can test out um and the way we really operate is that we really just kind of help them uh and give them an opportunity to you know try this class we have an add drop period at the beginning of our semester so students can take a couple of classes at the start of the semester and decide whether or not it's right for them teachers can decide that as well um and that's kind of our placement system but yeah students have have the opportunity to totally totally test out a class and be classes and be put where they are um in their journey so does the same go for uh music classes uh for like music theory and piano and things like that yeah, so our, our students take um, music theory, piano over the school of music. And if you, let's say you've been playing piano, having lessons, you can go in uh, and meet with the teacher and do a diagnostic and test out or level up. Uh, we've had students who had some, uh, you know, AP music theory at their arts high school that they were able to actually do a minor in composition or music theory uh, because they were able to level out of those, um, those classes just taking a, a test. And what about uh, performance opportunities? That's always a big question. You did mention that um, freshmen are able to perform uh, their very first year, um, which a lot of students are asking that question. So tell us what the year sort of looks like as, as a performance calendar. 
Yeah, I mean, we're lucky to have a ton of performance opportunities here. Um, in addition to our musicals, our BFA musical theater students are often cast in lead and supporting roles in our schools, produce plays, like I mentioned, and often perform in shows even with our dance program. Um, we also have a, an incredible working relationship with the Hippodrome Theater, which is a professional equity theater right here in town, just about a mile from campus. Um, the HIP and UF co-produce shows every year. And it's even built into our School of Theater and Dance policy that if a student is cast in a hip show, they're excused from any classes that might conflict with their rehearsal tech performance schedule at the hip, which is awesome. Um, our students also get performance opportunities with an organization here called Florida Players. Florida Players is a, a, an entirely student run, student produced, student board, student directed, student choreographed, all of it. Um, organization. They they produce full-length plays, musicals, and foster the opportunity for students to write and develop their own original plays in a New Works Festival. Um, and we also have some students who participate in the opera, which is produced by our School of Music. So um, with the shows produced by our School of Theater and Dance, the Hippodrome, Plora Players, and our School of Music, students end up having somewhere around three to four musicals, 10 to 12 plays and two to three dance shows and maybe an opera available to them each year. So lots, lots, lots available. Wow. And uh, at the end of the four years, uh, is there any sort of showcase or performance that, that um, sort of bridges that gap between collegiate theater and professional theater? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're lucky to have uh, a really great showcase. Um, and it's actually one of the reasons why I took this job when it was offered to me, because I went to see the, the showcase in New York while I was there. And I was really impressed by the industry professionals and the uh, just the people in the room when I walked in there. I was like, oh, goodness. Um, and then eventually, once I came here, I came to see why that the our, our faculty and uh, their network and their professional experience is is really robust. Um, so we have a, a wonderful um, showcase right now. And this year we're working really hard on doing both a digital one and an in-person one in New York City, um, because we, over the pandemic, we found how beneficial the digital one was to us in, in expanding our reach. Um, so we're really working on putting together both the digital and our um, in-person one uh, in New York, which usually happens in the spring. And uh, what about some success stories uh, from your uh, alumni? Yeah, we're, we're really proud of our students uh, who are out there accomplishing such great things. A uh, couple of recent alumni to mention might be George Salazar, who is in the Broadway cast of Be More Chill and Godspell. Uh, he was in The Lightning Thief off-Broadway, NBC's Superstore. Uh, Matt, you want to talk about uh, Valerie? Yeah, so Valerie Torres Rosario uh, just uh, finished understudying Philippa Sue as Guinevere and swinging a multitude of other tracks uh, on the revival of Camelot uh, and has a lot of really exciting projects in the pipeline uh, moving forward. And yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we have uh, there's also Yael Reich is currently taking a break from Hades Town on Broadway to do the regional premiere of The Band's Visit. They were also Ava Peron in the national tour of Evita. Um, and lots more. Uh, I, I, wow. I'm really thrilled that our students are all out there creating such fruitful careers for themselves and making such a beautiful impact in the industry. Awesome. Talk to us about other uh, key faculty members. You did mention the chair earlier. Let's let's chat a little bit more about who else they're going to be encountering while they're there. Yeah, sure. We have. We're so lucky again to have uh, faculty who've really. Uh, succeeded at a high level um, in their respective fields. Um, Tim Altmeyer is on our acting faculty. He's done uh, Oscar Wilde's uh, Salome with Al Pacino and Marissa Tomei. He was in High on Broadway with Kathleen Turner. He was in uh, Looped on Broadway. Um, Stephanie Lingi is the artistic director of the Hippodrome Theater and is also an adjunct faculty here. She was in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway and National Tour of Mamma Mia. Um, we have our cam on camera uh, faculty this semester or this year is Jesus Bonilla. Uh, did Marvin's Room on Broadway, uh, a bunch of TV and film, of course, Youth in Oregon, Oregon with um, Billy Crudup and Christina Applegate and Kappa with Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan and um, Gotham and Blue Bloods and Person of Interest. Um, we have 
some really great opportunities for students to learn about other uh, branches of the industry, like production and costuming and, and all of that. Um, Lisa Dozier King is uh, one of our theatrical management faculty, and uh, Lisa Lisa's production company LDK Productions um, produced Be More Chill. Um, is working on Anthony Raps Without You, um, and uh, uh, play or musical called Little Girl Blue, exploring um, civil rights activist Nina Simone. Um, Jen Dasher, costumes, it worked on Broadway and Honeymoon in Vegas, Cirque du Soleil, uh, Paula Abdul, Stunts Mustafa for PBS. Uh, really, really fabulous, um, fabulous faculty here. And I don't know, Matt, if you want to share a little bit about our illustrious Tony Mata, who is the man. Yeah, T Tony's uh, the director of our program. Uh, he's traveling, actually, right now. I texted with him. Uh, He's worked at the Kennedy Center, Old Globe, Tuts. Uh, he's the recipient of seven Latin Ace Awards. Um, it, it producer of the Linda Wilson Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, he's just recently uh, cemented a relationship with the Latin Theater Project in New York City. Uh, just a, a real icon, um, uh, documentary filmmaker, uh, director, producer. So yeah. really lucky to have him here with us. And yeah. just one, just one of the nicest guys too. He's just one of the nicest yeah. guys to work for. We love Tony Mana. Um, and and, the, and the, go. Yeah. Then the, and the great thing we all honestly love each other and get along. I think that's like one of the biggest selling points of our faculty, <laughs> 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 which isn't always the case. And uh, it's we generally get it's really we we do love each other and and get along great. Yeah. And Matt mentioned Matt mentioned that. Linda Wilson Lifetime Achievement Award and um, kind of expound on that a little bit. It's it's an award that um, Tony Mata has uh, put together for our program and it's brought in over the past uh, however many years legends in the musical theater industry like Cheetah Rivera and Ben Vereen and Joel Gray and Estelle Parsons and Tommy Toon and these, you know, incredibly accomplished performers come down to the University of Florida and get the chance to meet and interact and work with our students. And uh, it's it's a really incredible thing that Tony has been able to uh, foster for our program, thanks to his connections yeah. and his, uh, his just general awesomeness. <laughs> so tell us about the campus. Um, major, major university, a giant campus. Uh, what is there for students to do, you know, when they're not in class? Ooh. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. You name it. But we have, we have students in uh, volleyball leagues, uh, acapella groups. Uh, and what I've learned about the, the acapella groups is just like, um, pitch perfect. <laughs> like that, that's real life. It, it, it's, 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 it's all real. Uh, yeah. uh, Going to uh, sorority fraternity, uh, their Florida Players is a student government organization. We mentioned it earlier that it's it is within itself uh, a club of sorts. Yeah. Uh, so you name it. There's there's too much to do. That's what I always uh, tell the students. Our um, the University of Florida Student Activities and Involvement Center has over a thousand clubs and activities, and those range. Uh, in areas like the fine arts, cultural and student associations, religious and spiritual affiliations, sports clubs, recreation, social and global change, student government, health and wellness. I mean, some of the clubs that exist, uh, um, there's, there, I know there's a, there's a skydiving club, there's a sketch comedy club, there's a belly dancing club, there's um, uh, a martial arts club, there's a fencing club, there's a ping pong club. There's a knitting club. There's a pickleball club. There's a, I mean, you pretty much name it. And the cool thing too about those student organizations is, is that if it doesn't exist, you can create it. You know, if you want to, if you want to make a, a fantasy football club and, and meet up with other fantasy football people, although I actually think there already is a fantasy football club, <laughs> um, you can do that. Um, so students have the opportunity to be really involved outside of just our, what our school of theater and dance is, is uh, providing here. Now, even in musical theater, uh, 
sometimes musical theater students schedules are a little bit more packed than others. So uh, what are students in musical theater able to participate in fraternities and sororities and actually do anything in them? Because that's a concern yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have several students that are they they do lay out when they join that they do have priorities with the program. And so the, the their groups have been very understanding. Um, but but we have several students even right now that are involved in you know the the sorority rush and all the events and the the outings and and things like that. And uh, the campus itself, it, it, would you describe it as urban, suburban, rural? How would you classify the campus? I think it feels pretty urban. Um, you know, we it's a uh, our campus is 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 one. Uh, it's kind of an enclosed 2,000 acres with 900 buildings. So we're not spread out across the city. We are the heart of Gainesville. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it kind of feels downtowny, but the um, the campus itself is, is just gorgeous. Like I said, 2,000 acres just, uh, and all that land and all that, um, uh, those acres are, our campus. So when you're on campus, okay. you are on campus. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, all right. So the audition process, who wants to walk us through the application and audition process for the BFA Musical Theater at University of Florida? Yeah, sure. Well, we have a pre-screen. Um, we participate in the Common Musical Theater pre-screen, which I'm sure many students are familiar with. So we have uh, uh, used that same criteria that many other schools use. Um, uh, we end up calling back to in person from those pre-screens uh, a very select, just 30 students um, in the sp early spring, really late winter in January-ish. Um, we really like to create a, a special day for those 30 students um, to, for not only for us to see them a little bit more and get to know them a little bit better, but to give them a chance to uh, understand what we're doing here at the University of Florida and make sure that it's a good fit for them. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, we are pre-screens and then we go to those, th that live uh, in-person audition with about 30 people called back. Live in-person audition, what are students preparing for uh, material? We usually ask them to prepare the same stuff that they did for a pre-screen, not necessarily the same material, but the same um, uh, criteria. Should they want to, they could certainly bring in the same pieces that they used for their pre-screen because we are happy to see it in person and work on it with them in person. Um, but we also give them up the opportunity if they want to bring in some new material, we're happy to see that as well. So that's, you know, I think it's the 60 to 90 second song uh, and then a contrasting option a monologue, and then we have a um, uh, a dance call here as well. Sure. So, roughly, how many applications pre-screens are you getting uh, each year? A couple hundred now. Um, we're pretty fortunate. We're getting a couple hundred that we're going through, and from those, uh, we are choosing just six. So, um, uh, it's a it's a great great problem to have. Yeah. So you're down to 30 at the, the live auditions. How many offers are you making to get to that six? Six. Six? Oh, six. Yeah. 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 Good for you. So I, I could talk, the, the audition is, is just one part of it. And then I'd, I'll say that we could invite more than 30 if we're going just by talent, but we, we, we artificially cap it so we can spend time during that day with students they do their audition, we give a correction, have them try again, maybe do a little vocalization, give a, a, a bit of a coaching, see how they react. After that, we, uh, we have a list of, of finalists from that, that we then uh, go into an exhaustive inter interview process. And that is speaking to the student multiple, multiple times, uh, interacting with them and their family, uh, checking references. Uh, if we, uh, if I, I always say to the students, if I look at your references, I'm going to ask people in your area that aren't on the reference list generally to get a real idea about yourself, because we're we're not just going by the best audition. We're really looking at building a a unit, a cohesive unit, a family, 
And we want to make sure that everyone is, that this is the right place, that University of Florida, that our ethos, that our training model is the right place for you. And a lot of times, I mean, Andrew can, you know, speak to this as well. We'll have students that this is where they want to go. It's their, this is, they're, they're all in, they're fantastic, they're talented, but we know it's just not maybe the right fit for them. And I'll get on the phone, Andrew get on the phone, we'll call the head of another school or another program. I do this constantly. Uh, I always joke I'm the best recruiter for every other school. And I'll call and say, I've got someone. I just did it yesterday, actually. I saw an amazing young student in Sarasota, and I think they're going to be perfect for Oklahoma City University. And I, I texted uh, the, a faculty member. I said, I'm sending your way, and they, they know me, and they know that that's going to be a, that kid's already at the top of the list. So um, we, we go on from that and then really, really, really make sure that we uh, are setting that unit together. Great. Uh, so we usually start to wrap up the episode by asking each of you to tell us something that you are looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward to the December recruiting trip with Andrew Ko. <laughs> it's going to be great. Five days South Florida. We're going to be down. It's going to be great. It's going to be there will be elements of Thelma and Louise and dude, where's my car? <laughs> It's going to be so good, <laughs> and I just can't wait because uh, we, have, we have a good time, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I, Matt, Matt and I are lucky, lucky to be able to do a, 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 a lot of recruiting in, in, together and visit a lot of the schools, especially across Florida. Um, it's something that's really, really awesome. I personally, I'm, I'm pretty excited about a lot of the guest artists that I was able, uh, my friends, to bring into the our school theater dance just this semester. Um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, an associate from Tara Rubin Casting is coming in. Um, uh, I have Missy Singson, the artistic development uh, coordinator at Arena Stage, is going to uh, connect with our students. I've got a couple of uh, Broadway peeps, Paul Nolan, who was in Parade, and Bright Star and Dr. Zhivago and Once in Chicago. Uh, he's going to connect with our musical theater acting class. Uh, and my friend, Christine Toy Johnson, who was uh, in The Music Man in Greece and National Tour of Come From Away and has done a ridiculous amount of television, uh, is going to be connecting with our classes as well. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to just share my network and my friends with my new friends here at the University of Florida. It's always wonderful when we can, when we can bridge those together. So if a student or a parent out there wants to get to know a little bit more about the University of Florida's BFA Musical Theater Program, what's the best way for them to get in touch? I think the best place to go is our Instagram right now, and that handle is at UF Musical Theater, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. That's all one word, UF Musical Theater. Um, that is a good place not only to see what our alumni are up to and what types of industry professionals we bring into the room and what just kind of our musical theater program is up to, but it's also a good place to connect with, with me and Matt, because we, we manage that account. It's us. So if students DM that account, they will directly reach one of us. Um, that's probably the best place to go, I think. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank both of you for joining us uh, on the episode today. Uh, and we look forward to having both of you around here real soon. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. All right. Yeah, pleasure, Tim. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. For more information on the exciting training, workshops, and resources we have to offer at the College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube.